Good evening to everyone. Uh, this is Enzo Nero. I would like to welcome you on behalf of Etokinol Italy. I would like to thank you all for being here with us. And I would like to thank Point Veterinaire Italy for the technical support. Today's tonight uh, topic will be the evidence-based targeted therapy and new solutions for the on-farm diagnosis of clinical mastitis in dairy cattle. Our speakers this evening are Paolo Moroni and Stefan Floch. Paolo, well, he is well known by everyone. And after spending several years at the Cornell University, and with the last uh, mandate, the last appointment as director of the Quality Milk Production Services Laboratory in Ithaca, he is now full professor of infective diseases of domestic animals at the Department of uh, Veterinary Medicine and Animal Science of Milan University. Paolo is a recognized expert in the field of other health. And this evening here with Paolo, we will see which is the correct approach in terms of diagnosis and therapy to, in a, to enact a, a targeted therapy of, clini of clinical mastitis and to have a rational use of antibiotics. Stefan Flock is a colleague of mine. He works for Vetokinol Global. He especially, he is uh, in charge of the medical uh, department for the other health uh, uh, department. And he will share with us uh, the technical details of this new system diagnostic system, system named master test and uh, the aspects of its use in the rapid diagnosis of clinical mastitis. Uh, we will therefore learn some new innovative aspects of this system and how this might represent a truly unique solution to support veterinarians and farmers in the on-farm diagnosis and even to strengthen, to further strengthen the partnership between veterinarians and farmers. Uh, without any further ado, time available is limited, it's one hour. So I would like just to remind you that for questions, uh, which I will address to the speakers, you have the box, uh, the Q&A box uh, in the bar below. There you will be able to write your questions and they will be addressed to the speakers at the end of the two presentations. Moreover, on the, uh, you have an icon, a globe, and you can select Italian if you want to listen to the uh, Italian translation of uh, Stefan's Floch presentation. I wish you a fruitful evening, and I now leave the floor to Paolo. Paolo. Oh, thank you very much, Enzo. Good evening to everyone. And today we will try in 25, uh, 30 minutes available to me to talk about the on-farm diagnosis of clinical mastitis and uh, focused uh, um, therapy based on evidence. Where did we start from? In October 2020, in cooperation with uh, Vetokinol and hence uh, with uh, uh, my colleague and good friend Enzo Niro and uh, Antonio Barberio, we talked about the mastitis treatment in new uh, a regulations, obligation or a opportunity. This was three years ago. And in this uh, uh, three years time, uh, we experienced a lot of changes. Uh, I would like to remind you that on the 28th of January, 2022, the, uh, the obligation of the selective dry-off and more and more, fortunately, a better use of classiform with the various quadrants, uh, how to what we use, which is our consumption, the famous DBB within our farms, but even, let me say, a compensation by the system vis-a-vis -vis those who will reduce this year by 10% the antibiotic use with a, a, re, a premium from 60, uh, ranging up to 64 euros or from 64, uh, up to 250 euros if you do an extensive approach. So major changes, great potentials as well on our behalf as a, a group of category, as a group of veterinarians. And now let's dwell with some details. 
we reconsidered everything. These are data by Pamela Ruek, who in the last 25 to 30 years, she was an undisputable leader on the use of treatments, of antibiotic treatments during lactation in the case of clinical mastitis, but even in the dry off. And basically what she reconsidered recently is this vision you can see that basically the proportion of cases of mastitis, which not, I'm talking about non-severe mastitis, which do not have any benefit out of the antibiotic usage based on the different scenarios, based on the proportion of clinical mastitis in accordance with the spontaneous cure might range from 79% up to 68%. That means that if you have 100 mastitis, hypothetically 79 could even not be treated with antibiotics. We should never forget that when talking about clinical mastitis, at least 40, 45% of cases, well, you don't have any growth and this could even, uh, but the remaining 30, 25%, well, we could try to use it uh, with a focused, uh, well-targeted treatment, uh, which is the, the, the additional message to derive from, to infer. Here we have uh, to uh, even uh, uh, say something in favor of uh, vets. It is not true that it, we didn't do anything. These are data obtained from the EMA. And basically, these are data as of 2021, 22. We did major step forwards. We reduced third and fourth generation cephalosporin of 38%, polymyxins 80%, fluoroquinolone basically 14%, and some additional quinolones 83%. So the message from our uh, group, I mean, the, the, when looking just at these sales, we can say that it is not true that we just stood there and looked out of the window, so to say. But the question is, which is the correct approach for a rational use of antimicrobials in the treatment of mild and moderate mastitis? Well, and above all, how can I do and where can I do bacteriology for clinical mastitis? Because certainly not all laboratories, reference laboratories are close to us. Certainly not all laboratories can provide us with a service, a, a suitable service to the customers seven around the clock. Uh, uh, all over the week. And so there are various scenarios. I can do it on the farm, on farm level in medium and large sized farms, but you could even have a smaller farms. I can do it a look in the laboratories of the Milan University in Lodi or in the ZAS or in private laboratories provided they have a routine practice, a routine approach and then a training as well. And we should never forget that we can do it even as a practitioners with a practice to do it within our practice, within of what the Americans do to define as practices. Just to be clear, in which way I am able to identify what I would define POC, the strategic points, uh, the point of care, and where I can identify the mastitis problem. Basically, we have three areas whereupon we can work. And this is something, and the technology did major step forwards. We were helped very much by technology. Just think of what occurred in the milking parlor with the robots, with, uh, but even the new technology in the milking parlors, I can identify a quarter, a mastitis, a mastitis uh, quarter or a mastitis uh, cow by using different uh, modalities. I, they could be included or integrated, for instance, the somatic cell counts, the conductivity, there are many, many parameters. And what we certainly need is to have staff being duly trained in this direction. And in this case, I do not have, or it is difficult to understand which the causes are, which is the microorganism responsible for this type of problem. If I then move over, and when I leave the online 
approach uh, in the milking uh, uh, and they reach the milking parlor. In the farm, we have the possibility to uh, collect samples in terms of clinical mastitis. But what we're mainly interested into is, uh, am I able to get, to give an answer in a short time frame? Do I mean 12, 24 hours? These are the discussion uh, circulating. And then in which is the way I can treat? Do I have an antibiogram? I mean, MICs, these are our discussions. And there, there is a major role played by laboratories. Laboratories, and not just institutional laboratories, but the National Health Institutes, the universities, or the normal, the private laboratories, but even the possibility for the same vets or practitioners to provide this type of support, which are the negative aspects or the drawbacks in this type of approach. Well, Basically, how many data may I obtain? Which is the stuff available? And which is the time in which I can obtain, I can provide my farmer with some responses and everything. If you think of the USA, it starts from the year 2003. And we have uh, this trial, this uh, document by Robertson. And the most important message is that uh, in the majority case, uh, of cases of mild or moderate mastitis, the treatment uh, could be postponed by one or two days. Just think of uh, psychologically the impact uh, we have, uh, the difficulties we have in putting this message forward to our farmers and sometimes uh, to uh, us as well. But basically, from uh, 10 up to 40% of cultures, thus they have no growth, they don't yield any growth. So why should I use an antibiotic? We are talk uh, we're always talking about mild to moderate mastitis. And then basically an additional 40% on gram negative uh, E. coli coliform mastitis. I can basically expect, I can wait, and couple everything with an anti-inflammatory drug. This is maybe the most important message based upon a, the, the majority uh, uh, of the approach was based on. And here we have uh, uh, the, the, the US approach. We were the first to support Minnesota triple A in the US. And here we have various uh, uh, products available on the market in Italy. Obviously, according to the indications, according to even the knowledge of the of the company I work with, of the farm I work with, I can simply identify the gram positive or gram negatives, or I can have gram positive and coliform, or to dwell with more details, and I have the identification of enterococcus, uh, streptococcus, uh, pseudomonas, CNS, depends on the level I want to work with with my farmer. And these are the other diagnostic kits which are available, and you can see that, for instance, in the one in the middle, speed mass color, we can have 18 in 18 24 hours uh, anti an antibiogram, and then we will see this will not be part of my presentation, but it will be presented by the French colleague later on. The master test uh, and which are the differences available. So, basically, on the market, we have various products available a sort of technical uh, service uh, which can support me in managing mild to moderate mastitis. Let's stress me that mild to moderate. What can I treat? I can do a very first basic step. I decide to treat the gram positive, gram negatives, and I have no growth. These are the three scenarios. In the majority of cases we saw, and this is supported by the American data, there is no need for an antibiotic treatment, local antibiotic treatment, and hence, because we have very high levels of self-cure indexes. But when we deal with brain positive, the antibiotic treatment has a positive effect with high cure indexes or cure indicators. So no growth in this case. The use of antibiotic is suggested just in the case of gram positives. 
If I then want to uh, consider, consider other concepts, I mean, a protocol for the mastitis based on the symptoms, here we have an additional evolution. So I can subdivide the, the mild, moderate, and severe cases. Obviously, I do collect the milk uh, sample based on the instructions given. We have the, my, the subdivision in mild, moderate, and severe, and I have the various options. I can separate the cow. No treatment is done. Obviously, what is suggested in any scenario, mild or moderate, is to use an anti-inflammatory drug. In severe cases, the, the message should be clear. There is no discussion. The cow has to be subject to an antibiotic treatment, a systemic approach, support treatment, and basically to reassess the situation after 6-12 hours. But now let's focus on the mild and moderate cases. If I then do that, even based on the symptoms, the symptomatology, you can see here on day two, based on the result of my disease, I will have no growth, the coliform group, the streptococci, and they will have even the group of staphylococci. And so based on that, we'll, we take the strep and the staph uh, the, the, with the uh, coliform and no, uh, no growth. I don't take that into consideration unless there is a deterioration and worsening in the animal. And I can focus my treatment on streps and staphs by reducing uh, uh, by 40% uh, the uh, treatment. If you want an additional evolution, an additional support, besides from the identification between mild and moderate, which is something personal, so to say, to try to limit the possibility for the milker or the stockman will take any personal interpretation, will adopt any ter personal interpretation based on the local symptomatology, I can establish different parameters and different criteria. For instance, a hardening of the quarter, if there isn't any, it will be zero, if it will be hard, one, and if it will be very hard, two, that's the scoring system, or swelling of the quart quarter, uh, painfulness of the quarter, and uh, correct typical secretions. If at the end of the scoring system, we will reach uh, a score less or equal to two, the disease is mild. If the score is between three and four, the disease is moderate. So mild and moderate, I will use the previous schemes. If the score is higher than four, it is certainly an animal to be treated with antibiotics. And in this case, it's very simple. A higher attention by the milkman uh, or the, the milker or the stockman. Uh, and it is an, a simple to apply rule. Based on the general symptoms, I I can have the very same parameters. Obviously, the parameters will be the different. And we're talking about uh, rectal uh, temperature, hydration, and uh, ruminal indexes, and even sensory depression. And here, less uh, or higher than two, mild, uh, three and four, moderate disease, and more than five, severe disease. But anyway, the possibility to channel all of them, all the symptoms in a uh, according to three groups or categories. And then in the very end, uh, the summary, which was done by my friend Walker Kromker, a decision tree for the mastitis treatment. So the sample is taken uh, and SIDs are used, but uh, not steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but we should not forget the degree, my, the, the, the degree, the, the type of uh, clinical infection. And I can even consider to assess in this case the chronic infections when it is meaningful to do so, when it is meaningful to treat or not to treat. For instance, Cromker says that in three cases of mastitis in the same lactation or for three times uh, the counting of the, when you have over 700,000, in this case, it is. Uh, it has. Uh, it's uh, meaningless uh, to be uh, to stubbornly use the antibiotic. It is a cow which has to be parked or which isn't anymore treated. Obviously, trying to reduce uh, with the anti-inflammatory drugs. And again, re recap. What I say is ba based on the severity, based on the severity and uh, the distress and the general conditions, but we should not forget the role played by chronic mastitis. In that, uh, the scenario number one is that if I treat, if I have a targeted treatment, you can see in red is one cow with mastitis and in blue is the same cow 
with the second mastitis, so a relapse, a recurrency, and in case of recurrences, well, these cases are very limited. So I take the problem, I do identify the problem, I treat it in a target with a targeted approach, and the success is quite high. Obviously, there isn't any 100% success rate, but you can see that uh, there are the, the first um, case of mastitis are very many, are much more. But if we want to reduce the antibiotic, this is uh, an approach, an, a, a trial done by us at the Cornell University. We used seven farms, and in red it was before the use of the on-farm culture, in blue afterwards. And in any case, the number of uh, treated cases uh, are dramatically reduced uh, a reduction of approximately 67% of antibiotics and hence with a major success rate. In scenario number two, which is what happened, what we suggested was our suggestion, but above all, if I do not know what I'm treating, look at the cases, the repeat cases, the one I go on treating. In this case, we had a farm with prototheca problems, uh, with mycoplasma problems, so microorganisms whereupon the antibiotic activity has no value at all. And you can see that we even have uh, cows which were treated in lactation five, six, eight times, sometimes even nine. And uh, just think of an, uh, uh, in, uh, in financial terms, how many days these uh, cows spent in the infirmary box, uh, in the infirmary pen. So what is important is to even to know what is circulating in the farm, pay attention, hold on. Like all things, it is not uh, all everything positive. If I do not do any training, if I don't train myself as practitioner, but above all, if I do not train the milkman, the stockman, the managers in the farm about how to read the plates, this is a test we did at the Cornell and which was published. We took three different types of plates available on the market. And you can see that there are the various observers ranging from one to six. The first three were experienced observers from four, uh, five and six, they were students. And you can see there is a major variability. So it's not just that we don't, we need to have a product which works well, which is easy to be read, but it should be mandatory to have even the staff being trained, which are the obstacles towards change, the hindrances we were subject to, which we noticed. And why sometimes do we like uh, the idea about the on-farm culture and sometimes we don't like it? Well, here we have a sort of summary of the information obtained. Just try to think uh, uh, of the reluctance of the uh, workers when they have to sample the milk. Uh, milk. Uh, how many times did we suggest it? How many times uh, uh, this was done? I do not have any time. I'm not able to do it. I get a contaminated sample or a dirt, uh, dirty sample. It's not, I don't need it. Uh, I know which the problems are and so on. The conviction about the uh, waiting for the results of the on-test farms uh, uh, sorry, on the on-farm tests uh, um, without any antibiotic treatment is detrimental, is a, a damage. That's not true. I would like to mention that uh, uh, initially uh, in the year 2006, there were very many works in this direction, their reluctance to give up the antibiotic treatment, the infections uh, by gram negatives. This was a generation, a generation born with the treatment on all the cases of mastitis and possibly it is now time to sit down and to reassess that and based on the data available to review that. The, I'm always talking about mild and moderate cases and the conviction, as maybe that's more meant in Italian approach that the on-farm tests are just additional costs. They are not easy to be obtained to, and above all that the shelf life is limited and hence this could be could work very well in large farms, but uh, in the smaller farms, this could be a problem. And how to support the change? Basically, I think 
that the change, as in all cases or in all situations, this should take place first, uh, should be induced by us as uh, practitioners, as, and then to convey the information to the end user, the owner, uh, the manager, uh, the farmer, but the prudent, prudent use of, anti of antibiotics implies the um, uh, suitable practices uh, so to reduce the use of antimicrobials. This is the trend followed by the market. Uh, those selling cheese, they want to have this information and the men of the street would like to be told that to change uh, the changes might it might be very difficult to change something especially when these behaviors are part of your routine activity to change a process which is done for years sometimes is like uh, 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 walking climbing on the himalaya but we have to try to do it and the use of social sciences could be very helpful in understanding why vets and farmers do act in a certain way and in which way they could be motivated this is the whole philosophy based on which uh, Denmark and Holland uh, were based upon about how to convey these messages to the farmers and how to continue to spread these messages. Every change takes place through smaller steps, that's uh, obvious. And again, to have a successful behavioral change, the individuals should obtain a support, a super support, which could be our knowledge as practitioners, as vets, but above all, a growth on the quality of milk, where especially in the last years, we have more and more as a group to be involved into. I think that more and more the farmers do, will ask us, why am I supposed to use that? In which way am I supposed to use it? But basically, willingly or unwillingly, we will have to provide an answer to the various authorities, the one controlling us, uh, which fortunately or unfortunately do perform their duty, their task. So if I have the knowledge, if I have data available without any fear, I can support my ideas and provide explanations. I think that extemporizing something uh, to say, well, I'm using that because I'm experienced and I always did like that is an approach which we basically have to forget about. And these are very brand new data obtained by the Parmigiano-Reggiano Consortium by our friend Noncetti. We interviewed various uh, uh, practitioners and if you look at it, this is a survey for the obstacles, the hindrances against a change in the selective uh, dry off. And if you look at the right hand side, 70% of vets, they say that they fear to change and it was uh, the main limit. It's not a fear by the farmers, but even a fear per, uh, experienced by us, by the practitioners. And then the poor knowledge of the uh, issues, uh, um, uh, uh, the poor knowledge of what it is mandatory to be done, um, uh, stuff not very uh, reliable, that's a sore point, but the stuff should be a, a subject to a training to improve and then the time which is required which is uh, uh, less and less but basically the message is the fear to change is the main limit and in closing the change in the therapeutical behavior certainly will require time. Cer certainly it is an approach which has to be adopted, but it is you are not walking alone. Technology and the use of uh, big data, the use of laboratories of the on-farm culture could provide us uh, with a greater help, a major help. The farmer will not always uh, uh, stick to the concept uh, of treatment. Uh, uh, we, uh, it's a matter of compliance. Uh, we say something and 30% of the possibilities are interpreted in a different manner. So even the will and the possibility to assess the indications provided by us to our farmers. And it certainly requires a permanent training both on our side as veterinarians, but above all, a training for the continuous training for farmers or in talking about larger or smaller farms, the one reading the plates and interpreting the plates. It's not reading the plates, but it is the interpretation of it. And these interpretations should be uh, basically managed 
uh, properly and uh, done with uh, good knowledge. Our role as vets is getting more and more important towards, we should push uh, towards a reduction of uh, the antimicrobial use or better to optimize the use of antimicrobial drugs. It's not a green approach. It is not a 100% biological approach, but it is a, a moral and civil uh, approach uh, a major change we have to be a part of and we have to be the main players in a scenario which willingly or unwillingly is mandatory. All that obviously whilst monitoring the treatment and above all with a greater cooperation with those who are, are experienced and in this case Dutchmen are a ma uh, very experienced so I'm talking about even vets uh, with uh, a good uh, a track record, they could uh, help the new uh, vets, but a cooperation and working together is certainly one of the strengths. And with that, I leave the floor to my colleague and I thank you for the attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paolo, for your presentation. As usual, it was very interesting. And personally, I have to tell you that when considering the various subjects you dealt with, one I was very much impressed about is the concept about the behavioral change. And maybe because it is something whereupon we don't deal, we don't focus uh, very much upon. And I have to tell you, if you allow me to without any star and starting any discussion because then I want to leave the floor to Stefan immediately. The hindrance towards a change is maybe the same idea that you have to do uh, to, to act a change, the fear to change, uh, considering all the obstacles or hindrances you just described. Anyway, we could further dwell with that during our final discussion. And so I leave the floor to Stefan Flo and he will talk us about these new solutions for the on-farm diagnosis of clinical mastitis in dairy cattle. You have the floor, Stefan. Thank you, Enzo. Thank you for the introduction. So, to implement selective treatment of clinical mastitis, we need to take an informed decision within 24 hours. Identifying cases will benefit from antimicrobial treatment is then uh, compulsory and is key to supporting judicious antimicrobial use in dairy. Characteristics and history of the herd and individual cow, expected probability of cure and susceptibility profile are also very relevant. But clinical mastitis recording is always a weak point on farm and sometimes other parameters may influence treatment decision that can be simply emotional. Test assessment in resource constrained settings as it is on farms is done through the assured criteria and we'll come back later on what assured means. They capture scientific criteria, sensitivity and specificity with other two S of assured and convenience criteria like is it cheap, is it quick, etc. Dairy sector has often low profit margin, which argues for low cost, but price is not necessarily a priority. Cost may need to be balanced against ease of use. Cheaper systems need user training and staff retainment. More expensive systems offer automated sample processing and reading or interpretation. But cost can be balanced with time as well. Culture-based diagnostics need time for bacterial growth. And DNA-based diagnostics are fast, but require expensive instrumentation. Any test applied to a contaminated sample is a waste of resources. Not every point of care has contaminated sample as outcome, which may mask false positives and give high test sensitivity and lead to antibiotic treatment of contaminants rather than pathogens. 
sample quality may be more important than test characteristics. Tests are routinely judged based on scientific criteria of sensitivity, ability of to recognize positives, and specificity, ability to recognize negatives. But diagnostics should be validated in host species and under the conditions they are intended to be applied. Here, we talk about dairy cattle and dairy farms. But most published evaluations are laboratory-based. And the study's results need to be carefully interpreted, looking at the reference against which the test is, is, is tested, the threshold, population, calculations, etc. Et and for on-farm applications, predictive values are more important than only specificity and sensitivity, but they depend on prevalence. Well, for example, a high positive predictive value will lead to no unnecessary treatment given, which transfer to treat as little as possible and achieves the aim of reducing antimicrobial use. A high negative predictive value leads to a treatment with the health when cows truly don't need it, which transfer to treat as much as needed, so the cow welfare is not compromised. What do we really need for informed treatment decision in case of clinical mastitis? First, because we don't, we know, sorry, we know the benefit from antibiotic treatment, is it a gram-positive bacteria? Then, being able to differentiate between a real infection and a contamination by the number of the identified different species. Then, in a, if a gram positive is uh, identified, going further to genus and species level will be interesting. For example, strep versus Staphylococcus or Staphylococcus versus non aureus staphs. Resistance pattern in case of Staphylococcus is also uh, very important. And of course, susceptibility testing, but it will be more relevant in pure cultures. I, don't, I, won't, I won't go in details on available tests, but they are product predominantly based on culture and identification of mastitis causing pathogens via selective media on plates or in tubes. The sensitivity to identify gram-positive bacteria ranges from 59 to 94. 8% and the specificity from 48 to 97% according to Malkata. This test obviously can reduce wait times, facilitate testing and provide results when diagnostic laboratories may be closed. There's a newcomer, Mastatest. So Mastatest is comprises a robust and connected analyzer which is called the lab box with an optical eye to measure color change in cartridges with webs to identify pathogens and, anti and test antimicrobial susceptibility. The results are interpreted by algorithm and saved on a cloud-based platform. The lab box is very easy to use with a simple keyboard to launch a test and entering co-ID data, automatic data processing, automated interpretation, results sent by email. And you can see that you have four spaces in a lab box, you can run four tests at the same time. The cartridge is quick and easy to use, takes seconds, there's no need for a full training course. A user's guide with pictures can be easily understood, so there is no language barrier. And this is a screenshot of the web platform where everything can be managed. I won't go in detail, of course, but you can start launching a test from the platform, from the lab box or the platform. You can see that there are different lab boxes here. You have the four spaces per lab box, and here you have all the history of the results per lab box. There is a shared access results, automated data capture, and you can review car history and review our traits. Cartridge is made of 24 wells. Six wells are used for bacterial identifications. They contain reagents for biochemical reactions that provides color change read by the optical eye. 
and 18 wells are used for antibiotic susceptibility testing. They contain different antibiotic concentrations around a defined breakpoint. For Italy, the available cartridge is the so-called EUP5. This is a code name, I'm sorry. And it contains six antibiotics, which are listed here, benzene penicillin, cloxacillin, tyrosine, ampicillin, kefaparin, and oxytetracycline. Here are listed the different information that will be displayed in the results, starting from no bacteria identified on top to contaminated uh, here down. But you can see that you have two uh, type of results for gram negatives, E. coli or unspecified gram negative, and a group of Klebsiella serratia because the treatment decision will be different in this case. And for gram positive, you have all these different results, strep uberis, strep galactae, other streps, Staph aureus, CNS, other gram positive, and of course, mixed sample when you have two types of bacteria identified. And you can see that there's also a smartphone or tablet view, which is available with the platform. Antibiotic sensitivity testing is just reported for pure cultures only. If you have two bacteria identified, you won't get it. Three information are provided. Antibiotic ranking first, it is based on the MIC values. So the first antibiotic will be the one with the lowest MIC. You will get the MIC values and you will get also a status susceptible resistance, which is based on breakpoints. Additional features provided by the platform. This is an example of antibio susceptibility for one bacteria. Here we are the, uh, talking about strep results. And you can see on the graph, the color in the bars report to the different MICs. You can see on top of the graph here, it's quite small, but uh, and those results are, re are reported for 235 samples in France. And uh, you can see that they are, the streps have been tested against penicillin, cloxacillin, and tylosine. And you can see the different split between the, uh, the different MICs. You have a color code. The green means high chance of cure. The blue means possible chance of cure. And red orange, low chance of cure. And you can see for the red orange here, for the streps in France, cloxacillin, 50% of them had a low chance of cure, with tylosine, 30%, and with benzene penicillin, 10%. So you can benchmark antibiotic and you create an antibiotic ranking. This will allow targeted treatment to improve the cure rates. Reporting and analytics to guide your health planning. You can uh, look at the bacteriotype, bacteria type you will uh, you, you're getting with your master test. Globally, for one farm, a group of farms, for a specific bacteria, you can have antibiotic sensitivity. So just I just mentioned the, the one I just showed before. And you have also a treatment indicator, which is based on the same principle with the blue, which is uh, high uh, green, sorry, high chance of cure blue possible chance of cure, and red low chance of cure. And finally, you can also benchmark your farms, your clients. You can benchmark like here one client to the global totality of your client, but you can benchmark one client to, with another, one client with a group of clients with, who have farms which is, who are very similar to him, etc., etc. And farmers like very much to be benchmarked with other farmers. Two studies. First studies uh, coming from New Zealand, because this is where master test has been developed, where they compared to the available standard, which is the conventional bacteriology according to National Mastitis Council in official labs. They tested nearly 300 samples from mild and moderate clinical mastitis. And if we look at compared sensitivity and specificity, we get, uh, they get, they got, sorry, 95% sensitivity for all germs and 72% specificity for all germs. And you can see the details per germs 
Of course, Tafuris is, is the lowest one in the sensitivity, but always with a good specificity. We know it is always difficult to find. The second study we promoted uh, to prepare the launch in France uh, using the same method. You can see master test was uh, confronted with conventional bacteriology in the vet practice. And also we confronted the MICs with this method, method antibiosensitivity they are using in routine. 200 samples were included in this trial. Uh, if we look at the comparison, the correspondence between the two tests, master test and bacteriology on the gram first, which is maybe uh, at least the most important for treatment decision, the correspondence was uh, 91%. And if we look at agreement for other uh, germs, for coliforms, it was more than 85%, uh, which is very good. And also we had a look at uh, the isonorm, and we were very close to the threshold of 90% uh, when we compare to the isonorm, which is quite encouraging because this is a method based on algorithm. So the more it will be used, the more it will improve. So uh, we expect that the accuracy of master test will uh, go up in the future. Here, down this slide, you can see the results of the antibiotic susceptibility between the DIST method and the master test. You can see that they are very close. We just observed the tendency of overestimating resistance with master test. But this is a MIC determination in milk, which is closer to real life compared to a DIST method, which can be seen as an in vitro test. When we come to test comparison, and I'm coming back to the assured criteria, and you can see all the definition of the different letters. A is for affordable. It means here that those tests are not expensive. Of course, master test, if you include the price of the lab box, there's a difference. If we compare at cartridge level, there is no uh, that much difference. For the two scientific criteria, sensitivity and specificity, you can see that the, the ranges of results are quite wide. And we don't see any major differences between the tests. These are published data, not data from, uh, from, from us. U is for user friendliness. As I said uh, before, MasterTest is very user friendly. R for robustness. MasterTest is a very robust tool. E for equipment free. Of course, with MasterTest, you don't need to buy any additional equipment to run your test. Everything is included. And this for deliverable means that it's available in your country uh, quite easily. So no major differences here between tests. If we continue that comparison of other criteria, here ease of use, ease of interpretation, test precision, shelf life, and need for incubator with a color code here from uh, light blue for poor and dark gray, very good. Ease of use, as I said, MasterTet is very easy to use. Very easy to interpret. You don't need any training to interpret. It is done automatically compared to tests that need some training, as uh, was said in the presentation before. The test pre precision, we have seen that is equivalent to uh, multiplates IGAR. And shelf life, we have 18 months for mustated cartridges. And no need for incubator because the lab box uh, comprises an eating system. So, my final words, how can we increase the likelihood of the right decision being made on farm? Perform on farm culture on every clinical mastitis case. Use bacterial results for treatment decision, treat or not treat. Use benchmark of MIC values to select the most suitable antibiotic. And collect and share data information to assess their health. I will try a few words in Italian. Grazie per l'attenzione. Thank you, Stefan, for your presentation. You were quite in a hurry, it seemed to me. <laughs> but even with 
many information provided to us. I would like to uh, say the opportunity that this webinar has, is recorded. And so as soon as it will be available, the recording will be available, this will be available. So if you would like to have a look at it, if you want to reconsider it and to, fur to further elaborate on certain concepts, you can do it later on. You will be informed by mail. I would like to add something else. As far as Stefan said that the wells can be filled up to four wells simultaneously. Uh, simultaneously. Let's specify that they can even the cartridges can be even put in different time frames. Each test can start autonomously, the one from the other, so they can be used independently. At this point, I would like to start with some questions. I would, I'm going to follow the order. The first question is a little bit different from the topics we just dealt with. But it's, I think it's for Paolo. What do you think about the use of somatic, differential somatic cells as a prevention versus mastitis, as a prevention for mastitis? Well, I think this has been mentioned quite at length in these last four years, but we should not forget uh, that it could be useful for 10% of farmers, but we still have 40%, which is not registered in terms of functional controls. And by the way, I would like to see, instead of seven, eight, nine controls, to have 12 normal uh, controls with somatic cells, so to have a monitoring. And then the differentials, they could, it could be used by this moment in time, in my opinion, it is uh, um, a route for a limited number of people. I would be very basic. The som monthly somatic cells, in my opinion, is the best, are the best. And if I were to be a farmer, I would uh, try to uh, focus on 12 uh, controls per year. Thank you. A second question is close to a question I had. We know obviously, that all tests on farm tests can provide broader answers, could provide you with broader answers, but they exclude the possibility to look for other bugs, other infective agents like prototheca, prototheca or mycoplasma. So the question is on prototheca. Both, what do you think about the possibility for a treatment in the cases of clinical mastitis, as well as a possible long-term management as a possible alternative to culling these animals? Well, I think that treatment therapy, unfortunately, since it is an algae, we're dealing with algae, at present, we have no product whatsoever available. Some trials were published on MICs, but these are all products which are not used uh, by vets. So at present is nothing. Culling the animals, unfortunately, is at present still, no, sorry. First separation, segregation to milk them the last, and then certainly uh, replacement uh, after a normal replacement culling. What we did in certain cases is to go and uh, dry off the quarter so that if one quarter is infected with prototheca, and we are, yeah, you are towards the end of lactation, you don't have any large big productions. I can think of losing the quarter and to maintain the uh, remaining three. With reference to this question, 
I was pondering on uh, the fact that these some sometimes are objections vis-a-vis -vis the on-farm test. The fact that you cannot have an answer, a full response, a complete response at 360 degrees on all possible infections. Based on this point of view, what would you suggest? Which, starting from the basic assumption that any test will not provide me with any information in the case of prototheca induced infection, which are the other clues you would go like to go and have a look at? Whether we are on farm or not on farm, or the, the 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 samples are sent to the laboratories when approaching the subclinical, the clinical mastitis, mild or moderate. I think that using uh, mass bulk samples to know what it's circulating, not just within the herd, but even in large herd in a bar number one, two, or three, could be a strategy. After that, if based on uh, barn one, the information I want to get, whether they are um, infective or non-infective, so strep, agalactia, or oros, prototheca would include it as well. And then if we want even the mycoplasma, as for the rest, I think I can identify it partially as streptococcus and stuff uh, oro with the on-farm culture, but then uh, a, a, a monthly monitoring, well, I keep, would keep it on the tank or in the case of very large farms, even on the barns. The ideal would be to have groups of 250 animals when considering the sensitivity and specificity of the test and above all, not just a, a sampling, but at least three samples taken according to the American approach, three per week, just to consider the elimination or the culling, I think. Well, irrespectively from the on-farm culture, which will provide me with indications to know what is circulating in the herd is important. So at this point in time, I would have a bulk milk. I would work on bulk milk. Now we have other questions. A question for Stefan. As far as the antibiotics are uh, antibiotic uh, which are present in the cartridge of master test, the question is very direct. Why did you select these antibiotics? What's the reason for doing it? Well, I, I may have difficulties to answer because I, I think it was decided before I joined the company, but uh, uh, this is the only validated cartridge we have with six antibiotics today. I acknowledge it may not be uh, optimal, I would say, but... Uh, Let's see in the future if we can develop something else, but uh, this is the, the only validated uh, with six antibiotics for the moment. Thank you. Another question, which is completely different from the topic, the specific topic treated this evening, is which is the type of protocol you would suggest or the routine protocol for a selective uh, dry off. <laughs> so, which are the parameters to be followed? Uh, but please, a, a concise answer. I think that there are national guidelines uh, for the first time, which have been published uh, by the Ministry of Health, uh, which they do imply the subdivision in farms. Uh, with mild and moderate and high risk. And if they are at high risk, I'm going to take the threshold value of 100,000 cells in the last three sample, samples, uh, the mild 150,000 in the last three, and if very good, 100,000 in the last three. And then I can add clinical mastitis, but from this point of view, and these are basic uh, the guidelines of the Emilia Romagna region. And for the first time in the last five months, uh, I think that this is official. It's July and August. They have been approved by the Ministry of Health uh, and they can be followed. Let me repeat uh, that these they do not imply 
that Paolo Moroni or Enzo Nero, who know the farm A, B, and C, quite well, they can select uh, different parameters, but the, you have to motivate it. If I want to use, for instance, uh, 12,000 cells or 13,500, I can do it, but I have uh, uh, take to my motivation to the National uh, Healthcare Institute, but they are very well identified, very well characterized according to three categories. Which do you think to be a realistic target for clinical mastitis in a herd? The Americans do say not more than one mastitis per cow. There is a major discussion, less than four or five percent would already be quite success successful. I have a question for Stefan on master test. Could you have any problems if it is used on milk, which is kept for a couple of hours in the refrigerator? And second question, but I think this is more for Paolo. With reference to vaccines to control mastitis, could they be useful or it is up to the farm and its management? Who will take the floor first? I Stefan or Paolo? Io posso rispondere per quel che riguarda. So, yeah, no, there is no particular problem with master test and uh, milk samples kept in the fridge. It's like for others, uh, a few hours uh, is okay. The most important is to shake well the, the, the sample before testing because you may impact uh, very dramatically the size of the inoculum and then have a result which is not very reliable. I leave the floor to Paolo for vaccines. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think that the data on E. coli, well, first of all, you have to mention that uh, when talking about vaccination, it should be clear one forever, forever that it is not the disappearance of clinical mastitis, but it is the reduction of the clinical effects. And so basically, I'm going to have many more animals who it's my, uh, with E. coli and so on could be saved and could re resume lactation. With reference to coli and oros, we showed it. It is much more evident in E. coli. Uh, oros is much more complicated. I have to improve the routine approach and so on. And then in Italy, we even have a, a vaccine against uh, strept uh, uh, ovaries. And obviously it should be clear for everyone uh, even for farmers as well, that I'm not, I, I, I'm vaccinating and I do not change the management and I have uh, the uh, solution against all problems, vaccination. And this was said many zillions of times uh, when you, it impl implies, um, I mean, you have to have a, cha implies a change in management, which could be helpful, but the data shows the effectiveness. Keep in mind that in the USA, for instance, that's not the case in Italy, and in three, four years' time, they have marketed a vaccine against Klebsiella. Stefan, do you have any experience in terms of veto slide? Not that or maybe much, I could but, uh... reply. So the question is, sometimes it happens after the seed there on, on one side of the culture, you just have a few bubbles only. How do you, how would you consider this response the, as a positive, as an infected uh, sample or a negative uh, outcome? Even the presence of small bubbles should be considered a positive sample. Let's dwell now with another question. This has been read already. It's against uh, on master test. It's a sort of a comment on the way the cartridge works. 
is it really important to do a sensitivity test on each mastitis case or do you have cartridges with, with, which do provide an, a response just in terms of bacterial identification? Well, for the moment, for clinical mastitis, we only have cartridges with uh, antibiotic susceptibility testing together with bacterial identification. Of course, I can understand that if you get always the same results and the same ranking of antibiotics, you may think it's not necessary to have always uh, antibiotic susceptibility testing. But uh, anyway, you never know when uh, MIC will change with a, with a, with a, with a pathogen. So unless, you, unless you're following it uh, all the time, it's difficult to... To see, to see it coming. We have a question. Actually, these are two questions. The use of master test before the dry off, could it lead to a motivated use of an informed use, I would say, of an antibiotic? Or is it always better to refer to a certified uh, run approved laboratory? Well, I don't know exactly the rules in Italy, but uh, I would say that for uh, dry off decisions, you don't need to be in a hurry. So you don't, you, you don't need to perform a clinical mastitis test. And uh, Obviously, a subclinical mastitis raises uh, lower amounts of bacteria, so this is not designed for that. And uh, we may have in the future uh, cartridge dedicated to subclinical mastitis to be used at dry off. Yes, as a matter of fact, it's even linked to the type of cartridge which is used. I mean, to do a survey in the pre-dry-off period, you assume that you mm -hmm. want to work on a pool, on the uh, pool milk from the based on the quarters. Then we have to wonder whether this clinical cartridge is has a uh, sensitivity which is uh, good enough to identify the infected animal. And then the second part of the question, anyway, based on that. Is it possible to use master test on normal milk, normal at least uh, from a macroscopic point of view, or just on mastitic milk? Right, not normally it's for uh, clinical mastitis, but in grade one, the milk may be not that much transformed, but uh, is it designed for that? So even not really transformed milk, it works well as well. As well. I don't know if that answers. The Excuse question. me. Could you no no? Could you repeat the last part of the sentence? The very last words. I didn't hear them. Uh, what did I say? I say with even with non-transformed milk, it would work well. The last two questions. The first is for Paolo. Is it meaningful to have a farm specific vaccine? Besides from the responsibility, I think that the main pathogens are already dealt with. If you look at the epidemiology in Italy, we have uberis, sure, certainly. We have coli, oros, a little bit less, but there is. I don't think we can think of, then we don't have uh, farms with microorganisms only, so to have farm specific vaccines. I mean, we tried, there are some laboratories in the States, uh, they used to do them specific, but 
for Klebsiella, but now the problem is over resolved. Maybe the one who used the segregated, but I don't think that it is so easy to put forward such a requirement. And the last question for us uh, from Veto Kinol Italy, because it's a question, which are the costs uh, of this uh, device and the cost of the individual tests? So, lab box, the cost of it is uh, approximately 2,500 euros, approximately 2,500 euros. And it includes, obviously, even uh, the access to the platform where, and by the way, I have to add something as well, the individual test is a close to 10 euros. These are the present day costs. As far as the platform, which was presented by Stefan, let me stress that all the charts, the graphs which were showed are charts or graphs which were not built afterwards by Stefan, but they are charts or graphs which are automatically generated by the platform whilst you the data are uh, gathered, are collected on the day on the tests which have been executed. So these are reports available in real time simply by clicking on the platform. And all data can be unloaded, downloaded in a CSV format, which can, which can be easily imported on other software and other systems, uh, analytical systems or computerized systems, like for instance, in the dairy comp. Unfortunately, I have to inform you that if you have any additional questions, we will reply by mail if You want to give us your email address or your name. And as far as the information on master tests are concerned, you could directly get in touch with me. My uh, mail address is enzo.nero uh, at vetoquinol.com. Or if you want to send me any other signals, uh, pigeons, whatever you like, uh, get in touch with our sales agent whatever now it's really the <laughs> we are really reaching the end of the time available let me thank our speakers first of all for being available i would like to thank giovanna ah, that's me <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much grazie she's always i uh, <laughs> thank you and thank you to everyone i see that you were really very numerous we were almost 100 participants. So I would say that we are very happy and thank you very much. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you to everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>